So right now we're going to talk about proclaiming God's glory among the nations. And uh, let's open the Romans 1. Let's just start from God's word right away. Romans 1, 20, 21. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what his, has been made, so that people are without excuse. For out all they knew God, they neither glorified Him as, as God, nor have thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. As we just read, the question is not really, does God get glorified? God is already glorified. God always gets glorified. Even the creation, the universe glorifies Him. Showing clearly His eternal power and divine nature. The real question is... Do we glorify Him as God? It's funny how we sometimes forget things, right? So you have noticed how selective your memory is? So some situations, I just, I just remember, I don't remember these situations. A little bit later, you know, these situations remind me some very shameful deep dives from my past and and then I see more and more and more how, how many things I just didn't remember but I'm, I'm so happy that I don't remember this moment because there's so many things I just blew it in my life I just destroyed so many relationships there's so many shameful things that I, I why, how I could do that but Sometimes, you know, when I'm feeling that I'm getting old and starting to forget more and more things. So that is some things I never forget. Right? Even if it happened like a long time ago. So I just, you know, just thinking and then I, I, I can never forget. I remember clearly 45 years ago I was playing a trumpet solo in Estonia National TV, just eight years old. And, you know, then a few days later, me and my family and relatives were sitting together when it was showing on the TV. I still remember every face sitting around this table as it happened yesterday. And I remember this feeling, you know, like everybody looking at you, you're there, you know, I, I never forget that. Never. I also remember how I met my amazing wife, amazing wife, Hannah, for the first time. Ooh. I remember her face. I remember exactly what she was wearing. I remember the feeling. I will never forget that. <laughs> and I also remember every single time I won against my best friend Oleg in ping pong. Uh, when when Sirotkin's family used to come to, to Tallinn, Estonia, you know, and, and we hang out there together. So I remember clearly every single game. And I remember his face. I remember this feeling, you know. I will never forget that. But I have played also ping pong uh, with my best friend Eric many times. I don't remember those games. <laughs> There's a lot of games, but I remember maybe one game, actually one, one, one game. And, and later I, I understood that there is a big possibility that he, he let me win. Oh. You, you know that feeling, right? <laughs> it's so good I, I don't remember it uh, at all. But seriously, guys, 
Sometimes when life is not really going as, as we plan, yeah. um, we, we will turn to God eventually. And he always delivers. But then, when things are going awesome and you are getting success, let's be honest, guys. Do you remember whose power it was? Even knowing God, and we are here, disciples of Christ, so we should know God. Do we glorify Him and give thanks to Him in every situation? If not, our thinking become futile. And our hearts, our foolish hearts, as Paul says to the Romans, will darken. Guys, we have to understand. That we are not here today because we are such of ex excellent examples of someone's relationship with God. But because we are such excellent examples of God's relationship with someone. God is glorified. Always will be. What we must do is to reflect his glory. First point today, reflecting God's glory. Let's open 2 Corinthians 3. Are you with me, guys? 2 Corinthians 3, verses 7 to 18. Now, if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory, so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory. Transitory to divorce, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? If the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious has no glory now in comparison with the surpassing glory. And if what was transitory came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. But their minds were made dull. To this day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ it is taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the glorious glory, Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So this scripture here describes the covenants between God and man. The first covenant was glorious. But it was fading glory. But the second covenant is more glorious. The Bible tells us that the glory of the new covenant is of greater glory. Because it is eternal. Which glory are you part of? It depends on whether you are fighting against God. Or with God. Or in other words, trying to live by the law or by the grace. The Moses reflected God's glory because he's, he was face to face with God. This is what would happen in our life, in our quiet times, in our relationship with God. So it was God's word. That was glorious, not Moses' face. 
His relationship with God was like a mirror in which he reflected God's glory. Guys, we have to understand why Moses put the whale over his face. Not to prevent others from seeing God's glory. No, no. As some people think, probably. Not because he didn't want to blind others around him with his radiant you know, face or, or disturb them too much. He did it because the glory began to disappear. He did, he did it to prevent them from seeing the end of something that was passing away. The brothers and sisters, do we understand the spirit that every one of us received at baptism is more excellent and lasts much, much longer than even the glory that Moses experienced when we are in Jesus. The veil is removed and we can reflect God's glory in our lives. We all reflect something. Question is what? Proverbs 27, 27, 19 says, As water reflects the face, so one's life reflects the heart. Our heart will always reflect who we really are. What are you reflecting in your heart today? What do other people see when they look at your life? During the next few days, during this amazing EMC, we're going to hear many awesome lessons. We are going to have incredible fellowship with each other. And we're going to get some great advice. But if it does not go to your hearts, we will not reflect God's glory. The second point today is the knowledge of God's glory. The knowledge of God's glory. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Isn't that incredible? So Jesus said to us all, whoever wants to be his disciple must deny himself, take up his cross sometime and follow daily, right? Are you with me? i just checking. Are you, are you with me, guys? Take up your cross daily. And we have to follow him. This is backbone of our faith. It was the cross that started God's movement. It was the cross that changed the hearts of the people. It was the cross that Peter was preaching about. It was the cross they were sharing through the waters of baptism. It was the cross that gave them forgiveness. Where is our hearts today? Where is our hearts right now? Is it out there next to the cross? To keep asking, brothers, what shall we do? Is it out there where it should be? So when... I let the cross cut to my heart. I will see unbelievable things happening in my city. When I let the cross cut to my heart, I will see miracles in my personal life. And my life will reflect my heart to my nation. I want to share with you some amazing scripture. Hebrews 1, 
And you, 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 you know this scripture, and I have been using that. But just to, to, to understanding about the glass quarry, this is incredible. Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, and many times, and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed her of all things, and to whom also he made the universe. And here it comes. The sun is the radiance of God's glory. And the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Let's stop right there. Come on, guys. Isn't that just flat awesome? So what a powerful, spectacular scripture it is. First, of course, it explains that uh, there will be no new prophets coming after Jesus. And he is the heir of all things. But we just, we just read Paul's words in Romans 1.21 that God's glory has been clearly visible and understandable through the creation of the universe. And here it is. God made the universe through Christ. So Christ is the ever-increasing glory of God. And we also understood in reading the second Corinthians 3 that why Moses' face was ra ra radiant. So it was God's word that was glorious, not Moses' body, right? And here it comes. <laughs> the sun is the radiance of God's glory. There is not possibility to be radiant, to be happy, to really reflect light here in church without having Christ in you. So the radiance should be the exact representation of his being. You know, this is a very good mirror. Very exact mirror. The exact, you know, that is, if, if you go to, you know, 7 Eleven or something, that is, you know, these houses, you can laugh a lot, that is different mirrors, right? Yeah. And some mirrors, oh, 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 some mirrors, hmm, I can look good too, you know, like, the, it, it just changes a lot there. But, 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 but the, the mirror, really, the, the reflection, what God expects from us, yeah. this is the exact representation of His being through Christ. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. This powerful word. How do you read his word? Do you read it as somebody which is bound with the old covenant? You just read? You just try to find some technalities? Or you're bound with a new covenant? Do you just read it? Or do you practice it? Taking up your cross daily, following him. Blaise told about the little difference of sold out and totally committed. The same thing, actually. But I, I think sold out even better. Because if we talk about totally committed, you know, you can be committed, totally committed to, to different things or people, right? You know, so that was... A lot of people around Saddam Hussein, you know, they were totally committed. You know, they were totally behind him, you know, but it didn't make them really, you know, sold out for God. And at the end of the day, you can be totally committed to the Roman Pope, you know, or whatever. But, but actually, think about that. Just if, if, if you are sold out, it actually doesn't matter to whom you sold out everything, right? You just give it away. You just give it away to just go and follow Jesus. The veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. <laughs> Even to this day when Moses is read, a veil covers the heart. So we are all reflecting something. What do you reflect right now. Actually, guys, it's highly visible. So, 
if you are looking into the light, your face is radiant. You know, you're just looking at light, and it's light, and if you look to the dark, it doesn't see you. You know, the, the moon, right? Some, some incredible evenings, you know, you go to walk to the park with your wife, you know, and, and there is this moon you haven't ever seen. It's so big, so radiant. Is this moon's light? No. Moon is reflecting the sun, and when something coming between them, it's darkness. There is nothing left. Reflection from God, it's highly visible. So, if somebody looking into the darkness, his faith is in shade. This is hard to understand, but there, is, there are disciples who are in the light. They, have, they, they, they get to know God. They, they follow Jesus. But in some moment, maybe this is too hard situation. Maybe it's too easy. You know, sometimes it's even more heavy to bear their success. Some moment they start looking into the darkness again. And you see how they start losing the joy. That is no reason to do that. When you're following Jesus, he said in John 8 that, that I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never, never walk in darkness. Let me tell you guys, when I'm standing, you know, on a stage every week to preaching, I can see clearly what's going on in there. You know, like even when you're leading a song, you know, like, you know, everything is so clear. And you can see whose face is reflecting the light and whose face is in the shine. You can see who took some time this morning to look into the light of the knowledge of God's glory and who haven't done it lately. What do you reflect right now? Third point. Proclaiming his glory among the nations. And let's go to the Isaiah 66. I was sure when I handed out this... Uh, this uh, sermon, so it was exactly what, what uh, Michael was thinking about. Isaiah 66, 18 to 19. And I, because of what they have planned and done, I'm about to come and gather the people of all nations and languages, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. And I will send some of those who survive to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libans, and Lydians, famous as Arshas, to Tubal, and Greece, and to the distant islands that have not heard my fame or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory among the nations. God wants us to reflect. His glory among the nations. We must have faith to do it. How eager are you to reflect God's glory? How eager are you to get God's blessing as a leader in God's kingdom? So many of us want quick results. Because we love our position and we are so afraid to lose it. Faith is an incredible thing. So, like, the, the moment when I, when I figure out that now I understand what faith is, <laughs> next day I don't understand anything yeah. what faith is. Yeah. It's all up and down. Yeah. All up and down. Yeah. But, but, but God really trying to explain that again and again and again and again. And, and, and it's, it, it's not about the the tactics or, or details, or it is details. You know, if you love, there's a lot of details, really. You know, uh, in 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 this 
uh, your, your actions, your, your, your every, every, every moment when you want to show that you love. But end of the day, you, God just trying to show what love is through all the Old and New Testament. And he, he's just uh, trying to show how he, he, he's he, like he's, he's just relaxed. He's just a father. He's just a friend. He's there. And he trusts you. He trusts me. This is, this is incredible. Hebrews 11, you know, like this is all about faith. It starts from the faith. It is, he's trying to explain and same thing. With, oh, now I understand. Then he goes and explains. I don't understand anything. You know what's going on here. <laughs> but but, but, but you, you, this is a few guidelines he gives us. We, we can't just, you know, grasp it. We need to live it. We need to be there. We need to increase it. We always have a little bit, but, but we need to always add to it to continue to grow. Hebrews 11, 6. Do you like it? He says, and without faith it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So we cannot please God without faith. This is clear. Okay? But what actually is faith that pleases God? Believing in God that he exists. Okay? Do you believe God exists? Yes. Come on. Who, who here believes that God exists? Yes. Amen. Awesome. James said in James 2.19 that even the demons, even demons believe that and shudder. No, no, no. We need to understand, it's, it's, it's coming more here, that only compares us to demons. And demons doesn't reflect God's glory too well. Faith is combination with two things. The beginning point of faith is looking at God's character. He is who he says he is. The ending point is believing in God's promise. He will do what he says. What do you believe? What kind of character does God have in your heart? So are you really reflecting God's glory? Do you know his promises? So do you do, do believe it? You, we need to know it. We need to understand what he has promised, right? To get convictions. So... I, I, I have to be honest. I've had attitudes against God for things that are not changing in my life or in my ministry. As taught God, we're unfaithful. So most of the time, it has been about relationships in my life. Relationship with brothers around me. Um, relationship with my, my wife. My very close people, because I kind of expect so much more, so much more from my wife than from me even. I noticed that. And when I understand it, when I see that actually when I doubt, uh, when, when I doubt my, my closest friends, and, and, and I, just, I, I just don't trust God. It's, it's nothing to do with people. It's do. You know what I've learned? We must struggle with brothers that God put in our life. And not against them. It's just a matter of faith. Do you trust them? Do you believe in their commitment? Do you also believe in their promises that Jesus is Lord? Are you reflecting God's glory? Or we're reflecting our own awesomeness. Thing is, sometimes we want to cover and, and kind of defend people we teach and people who is in our ministries do get hurt. And then we, we cover them like, okay, maybe it's better. It's, that is not so many brothers they are, they are, they are interacting with, you know, because then they, it's easier for them to grow. And, you know, 
No, we, we have to struggle with each other. If we do that, we find, we're just going to find out what God feels every day. Every day trying to reach out to me. How he thinks, oh, he never learns, you know. Like, he's never going to change like I feel sometimes towards others. I, I need to change, guys. If we continue to read Hebrews chapter 11, it tells us about different incredible Old Testament heroes. And it's Abraham, Noah, Gideon, David, Daniel, etc., etc. It tells us, it tells us that all these people were still living by faith when they died. Verse 13, they lived and died without seeing the fruit of their faith, and yet continued to believe. Why? Because they looked forward to the promises. And know that their present situation. Do we know the promises? That's what, what does the, the, the classes and lessons we, we have. And we go back to the promises of God. So awesome. Everything in the New Testament is actually promised in the Old Testament. This is what does makes this new covenant a real covenant. All nations have been prophesied throughout the all and throughout the New Testament. But now you have to understand that it wasn't the teaching of this day. They couldn't possibly understand it. It was all about one nation back then. They were prophesying about something they didn't really understand, but they continued to believe. We have no excuse not to believe. It's not that we cannot get faith. We are not faithful. Kingdom of God for all nations are such a powerful vision. Not only because it's so awesome, but because it was prophesied through all the Old Testament. The pro of cross is not only because Jesus died for our sins and resurrected, but because it was prophesied through all and the, and all the New Testament too. Our sin broke Jesus down and killed him. And now we are building Jesus up. The church is Jesus Christ. It's God's kingdom and God's glory. And it's always been his promise to us. We must have faith in God's character and his promises. Often, I don't know about you, but I have a feeling that we are more concerned about our titles and responsibilities. Often, we are controlled more by what other people think about us than what God thinks about me. And this can take total control over us. It's just going to suck the joy out of our lives. And we are going to be shut out. We need to be less concerned about the blessing and more concerned about growing closer to God. I know I need to be less concerned about my role and losing or gaining responsibility and be more concerned about losing and gaining faith. <laughs> responsibility without faith. Is a burden. And it is very hard to reflect God's glory with her being burdened. First John 5 3, first John 5 3, in fact, this is love for God to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. I I just like when the Bible says, in fact. <laughs> We, we, all, we all believe the Bible. We, we all believe it. It's all facts in here. But, but amen. I, I, I love that. In fact, and I like that in fact, his commands are not burdensome. I think this is the main thing what, what really uh, held people back to really obey and really go into the leadership because they, you know, this phrase that it's going to be burdensome. But she said, no, 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 no. You, you, if it's burdensome, you're doing it the wrong way. You're doing it the wrong way. 
You have to do it because of love. His commands are not burdensome. If I love him, if I reflect his glory. So the thing I have to work hard for is my love for God. I know that I have to work on it. But, but when, when we work on it, when, when we do, like, when, when I really worked, I really wanted to see, like, Anu, you know, starting to love me and, and seeing how much I love her. So, so I, I didn't go to her and say, like, you know, like, just, are you ready to be with me and work hard? Make breakfasts, take care of children, you know, obey. It's, it, come on, like, you know, I, I want to go, do you love me? You know, like this is, this is exactly how God coming towards us. He, he really hoped maybe, possibly, or perhaps they reach me. They, they try to just ask, wow, why, why do you love me so much? You know what? Why I would, I would like sometimes really to remember all these shameful things even more. When I, I, I know, like when I just, oh, like I meet somebody, I don't remember the, the I don't know, two, three years back, I was just jerk against this person, you know, like, like and, and, you know, I was, I was drunk, I did, like, just terrible things, and, oh, hi, how are we doing, like, and then I remember, ah, oh, how painful, how shameful, and it, it, it makes me humble. So, so it, it, it's good to remember where we come, to really understand that this is what we have to to, to, to show other people is God's glory, not ours. It takes us away. Us. I know I have to grow. And I know it will happen. Not because I'm so smart. Not because I'm so awesome. But because my faith is based on his promises. And he promised that when we call on him, and pray to him. He will absolutely, definitely listen to us. So, I have to open two more scriptures. Two then. I have to open. And, and I, I didn't want to open, but, but, but I have to open it. You know, there, actually, in, in, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, they're talking about EMC. And, and, and they 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 telling that we have to have EMC. We have to have GLC. We have to come together. And that is also the, the reason why. And you know the, the Jesus talking in, in John 15 about uh, uh, having the complete joy? And, and, and this is what we need. Joy. Light. You know, if you are joyful, God's light is reflecting on your face to others. But... But, but again, like, what, 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 what means about the complete joy? If you go to Deuter Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy 16. So there is exactly this combination of words, complete joy. And we go to the Deuteronomy 16, 13. So this is a feast of tabernacles. There's a feast over weeks, you know. The, the thing was, uh, uh, the people has always been like people are. They forget. And God wants us to remember, remember that this is us. This is us who are reflecting him, not him who is reflecting us. And, and it, it's always been a problem that, that God's people are, you know, God was with them all the time. But you understand, you go through the, through the desert and God was there. They saw him. There was a cloud, there was a fire, there was a water coming out from the road. God was that all the time. And you, you know, you, you probably think, oh, if I would see God face to face, you know, like I always going to be faithful and no, no. You know, it's not going to happen. Because we have seen God. We know God. The question is, do we remember who has the power? And, and, and the people of God had to come together every year. And the Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Tabernacles just mean one thing. To remember who has the power. So 13, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days after you have gathered the produce of your freshing floor and your wine breasts. Be joyful at your feast. Be joyful at your feast. Amen? Amen. 
you, 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 your sons, your daughters, you, 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 your manservants, your maid servants, the Levites, the aliens, the fatherless, and the widows who live in your town, for seven days celebrate the feast to the Lord your God at the place the Lord will choose. For the Lord your God will bless you in your harvest and in all the work your hands and your joy will be complete. Yes. So they had to come together every year to remember. Oh, da, da, da. It was awesome. We had great, great harvest. And, 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 but it wasn't us. It was God. So they came together eight days. I wish we could be eight days together, right? And just celebrate. It would be incredible, you know. So they had eight days from the Sabbath to the Sabbath. And they couldn't work this time. Nothing. They need to understand, it wasn't their work. It was God as their faith, what the bring in harvest. <laughs> Guys, I don't want you to understand me wrong. There is a lot of hard work involved, of course. Whatever you do, there is, there is hard work involved. But I, I don't want you to go to Angatrin and say, oh, you are, you are 19 now, you know, like 19 has been hard work. Oh, no. It won't enjoy. It has been incredible time to be. Of course, God gives you harvest. Harvest is there. Now bringing in. This is work. But not, you know, getting it there. It's there always. It's there already. It's waiting. God prepared it. Let's go to Zechariah 14. This is a really, I, I, I promise, it's the last. Let's go. Zechariah 14. Zechariah, sorry. Zechariah 14, 16, 19. This is about EMC. Listen, this is a command to all nations. He says here, 14, 16. Then the survivors from all nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go up a year after year to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. If any of the peoples of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, they will no rain. They will have no rain. If the Egyptians people do not go up and take part, they will have no rain. The Lord will bring on them the black, the inflicts on the nations that do not get up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that do not go up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. So Feast of Tabernacles, it means just to give all, all credit to God. To come together and say, we didn't do nothing. God gave us feast. And, 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 and we just bring him in, you know. And yeah, it was hard time to eat. <clears throat> we have to chew, you know. And we have to swallow. <clears throat> and then we have to fellowship, you know. And, but it's joy. It is joy. It is love. But do you understand what he says? The nation what don't come together to remember who is behind all this? What's happening? That this is God's glory. We'll be punished. No rain. We'll pray for rain in Stockholm. We'll pray for rain in London. We'll pray for rain for all Europe. <laughs> Guys, let's make this an incredible MC. Let's have joy. Let's celebrate God's glory. Let's fellowship with Unveiled faces, looking to the light, and reflecting God's glory to all nations. Amen. Amen.